Hi, I'm Sterling Edwards. Thank you for joining me. I'm going to show you some tricks on how to use a palette knife with watercolors. Now, for years I was an oil painter and an acrylic painter. I still am, as a matter of fact, but I do primarily watercolors now. I did a lot of, uh, a lot of my impasto work with oil paintings and, and acrylics were done with a palette knife. And I never realized until it was shown to me that you can also use a palette knife to use some beautiful effects with watercolor. We always think of watercolor as being a very delicate subject that you use a lot of very, uh, very fluid, uh, wet paints on very wet, delicate paper. And you try so hard not to abrade the paper in any way whatsoever. And then here I'm, t I'm talking about taking a palette knife and just dragging it across that paper. It's amazing what you can do with this thing. I'm going to spend a few minutes talking to you about this, but first I want to explain to you when you choose a palette knife, how to choose the right palette knife. They come in every size and, and shape you can imagine. What I like to do is get one that's relatively flexible. If you look at this knife, you can see it really bending. This thing has a lot of spring in it. It's very, very thin. It also has this very nice notched, or I, I should say kind of a bent handle. So you can hold this and go across your paper like this without dragging your knuckles into your painting. Don't buy the ones that have just a plain, a plain straight edge because you will be dragging your knuckles across and smearing everything around. I like one that I can get in there and just very carefully take this, manipulate it. It's very lightweight. It's comfortable in the hand. But if I want to get down like this and do some scraping, I've got lots of leeway there for my, my hand to fit underneath the blade. So what do you do with a palette knife? Well, I'm going to show you right now how to make a birch tree using a palette knife. It's really it's a very simple technique and it's quite effective. Now you can, you can take this and incorporate this into a painting. You could actually make a painting out of this birch tree exercise. But I'm also going to show you how to use it to make branches, how to make grass, and how to even do a little bit of scraping just to uh, get some of the other shapes a little bit more, a little more definition, make them a little more interesting. To begin with, when you buy a palette knife, they're very, very oily because they're milled in a factory. They have an oily coating on them. And you've got to get that off, otherwise water or paint will not stick to it. The best way to do that that I found was just to take some toothpaste, especially the kind that has baking soda, and go into the kitchen sink or the bathroom and just take some toothpaste and wash it really good, really abrade it, then rinse it off good and dry it, and then don't touch it. Once you get it dry, keep your fingers off that blade because your skin has oil, and we don't want any oil whatsoever to get on that blade, otherwise water won't uh, be picked up by the blade. So let's take this blade that I have right here, this palette knife. If you look at my palette, I've got this very, very wet mix of paint. In fact, I think what I'm going to do, since we're doing a uh, birch tree, let's even get a better color. Let's take some brown, and I'm looking for a nice fluid brown. This is brown steel to grain, very transparent color. Putting a little bit of violet in it, just to make it even darker. Now I've got this nice dark mix, so let's see if we can't do this. I'm just really loading the bottom of that knife up with paint. And you don't really realize how much paint is on there, but there is a little bead of paint on the back of that palette knife that's staying there because it's, it's pretty, uh, you know, pretty oily, uh, oil free. Now to do a burst tree, for example, I can take this knife and kind of pull it up like this and then pull it across. Let's do another little area up here. Now I can come in and do the other side of the tree. And it creates just a beautiful little suggestion of a birch tree. There aren't any branches yet, but there will be. This is one of the favorite things I like to teach in workshops. People have so much fun with this, making their, uh, their small paintings of birch trees and so forth. Now I can take the same palette knife with another application of paint, and I want you to watch this branch I can make by taking the knife and just really pulling it out. I can tell you right now, having painted all my life, I could not do that line with a brush. Because a brush, because of the weight you put on your hand, the brush gets skinny, it gets fat, it gets skinny, it gets fat. This is a very nice, consistent, straight line. Let's do another one. And you can make them just as many as you want, the angles you want. So sometimes when I'm working on a painting, I want just a really long, skinny branch. I can use this technique. I'll get my palette knife out, load it with paint, and just go for it. Now, if I want to do some of the texture of the tree, for example, those little uh, areas of bark that kind of stick out on the side, the little pieces of paper, as they call them, it's real easy to take that knife, just kind of pull those out. Keep the paint nice and fluid. Keep it nice and wet. 
and you can make a very convincing birch tree real quickly using this technique. Makes a great Christmas card. Do a couple of these and suggest they're sitting in the snow and people will eat them up, I promise you. Now let's make a little small tree coming out of the ground right beside it. How big you want to make it. Another thing I like to do with these pallet knots too is paint grass. It makes the most incredible fine blades of grass. By fine I mean very, very thin, very straight. I've never found a brush I could do that with, and I've looked. There, I don't think there's one out there. I've never found a brush with a point that is that consistently sharp to make that kind of an effect. So hopefully this gives you some ideas. Next time you're in the art supply store or you get your catalog out, Get yourself a palette knife. This, by the way, is a number eight. It's a number eight palette knife. And another thing I want to point out, too, the, the tip of the palette knife is barely rounded. I don't want one that has a very sharp pin point because I really don't want to damage the paper more than I have to. But this really hasn't damaged the paper at all. It just gave me a chance to go in there and just make some pretty interesting uh, applications of paint. It's a lot of fun. Practice with it. You'll be surprised what you can do. You'll find all kinds of ways to incorporate these little palette knife uh, tree branches and grass into your painting. I hope this helps. If you have a chance, look at my website, sterlingedwards.com. You'll see lots of uh, examples on my website where I've used these techniques as well as many others. And be sure and check the workshop schedule. I might be coming to your town sometime in the near future. I'd love to meet you. Thank you very much.